It's the Indiegogo campaign that caused an uproar on Twitter recently. Hi everyone, it's Carrie, aka Nerdy Girl Crates, and welcome to my channel. It is Indie Friday, and we are going to take a look at Fiendish. Now, this is a um, Indiegogo campaign that I backed, and recently, while I was working on the review, there had been some comments made on Twitter uh, from Heather Antos towards uh, the creator behind this, Irene, and I'm going to butcher her last name, but she goes by Renee Draws on Twitter. Apparently, Heather Antos didn't like the fact that um, Irene decided to go ahead and fund her own campaign and work on her passion project because Heather wants everybody to remain where she can control them. Whatever. I... I I applaud people for breaking away from the big two and trying to go on their own because a lot of them are not getting the benefits of working for the big two financially, creatively. Uh, there's a lot of toxicity going on in that. Have you seen many YouTubers talking about it? And if you are on Twitter, you've seen a lot of the people from the industry just spreading their toxicity all over it. <laughs> so, for Irene to make this choice to go out and work on a story she created that she will own and she will profit from is not a bad thing, okay? It is not. And for Heather Antos to be putting people down for doing this just shows you what type of person she is. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So let's get to this. This is Fiendish. Now, Fiendish is this um, fantasy-style comic that focuses on a boy in this fantasy world. His name is Kazmir, and when he was young, he witnessed the um, destruction of his village by these demons. Now, it flash forwards, and Kazmir is older. He works as a hunter. He helps people safely get through different areas. And um, he once again encounters the demons that have haunted his past. The first thing I want to talk about with this is um, Irene's art. And I want to say I like it a lot. It's it's really, it really fits this genre well. I know she's talked about trying to combine East meets West. She's a big fan of Vinland Saga, and I do see a lot of elements from that. Uh, but this style just seems to fit like this fantasy kind of D&D type world. And it works really well. Um, it stands out. She has her own art style. It's, it's, re it's, it's really nice. And the other thing I like is the use of colors. They use a lot of matted colors, a lot of violet, reds, blues, and greens. Kind of like to paint this darker environment without having to um, go fully with dark grays and blacks so it kind of like drowns out everything but it kind of it does really well in emphasizing the atmosphere of this world Casimir lives in um it's very dangerous these demons that come out um the design on them is pretty interesting it just kind of reminds me a little bit of stranger things in a lot of ways uh the story now, this is where I want to get into things. The story itself is interesting. But I kind of feel like Irene is kind of holding back on just, like, how dangerous these monsters are. I know she's about to launch the second book, so it might get into it more. But right now, we've only encountered one. Um, one monster. And when you do the... When the flashback in the beginning kind of doesn't really go fully into, like, this whole massacre. You just see kind of like Casimir, and I think it's his sister, and then a couple bodies laying around, and the place is on fire. Kind of, like, wish, like, you go, she would go in a little more with that. Kind of, like, really emphasize how dangerous these demons are. I'd also like to see, like, when Casimir recognizes the demon, he sees her the first time years later. Kind of, like, emphasize, like, the, um trauma they caused on him maybe a flashback or something i kind of want to see a little more with the monsters i want to see exactly how this is affecting casimir and how these dangerous these monsters are right now is very contained and again that could change with the next book it's very contained 
Um, but I do like how she sets up the mystery. Um, there's potential for world building here because they're introducing a journey with um, Kashmir and a couple of other characters. And it's, it's, I can see this really growing and being a long run series if it's done right. Um, I do hope we get more character development though. Like I was saying with Kashmir right now, you know, he faced a trauma, but you kind of want to know that journey from the beginning to where he is now, like how, how he's been dealing with things, what he's been doing. There's also a couple of other characters we might get more character development within later because they're kind of like introduced quickly and they're suddenly thrown into a situation with a demon. So there is not really room right now for development there, but I can see it down the line. Just kind of want more fleshed out. Um, I also kind of want to see, because there was something in the beginning, I don't want to spoil anything, when it came to the demons. I want to see a little bit more diversity in design with the demons. Because it is hinted at. Um, but again, we're only dealing with one in this whole entire story. With the exception of the beginning flashback. It would be great to see, again, like, really emphasize, like, the danger. Um, kind of show Casimir what he's, you know, has he been preparing for this? Was he expecting them to come back? Like, I feel like right now... Everything, and I'm going to say it again, is contained in a very small scene, which is a very few players. And again, that can grow with the next book. So it'd be kind of great to see more development, a bigger situation, like a far more um, impactful scenario that just really goes into how bad this demon infestation is but again the art is great there is potential for this story i think irene is doing a great thing by getting out there and really um pushing her own dream project because this is what has to be done i mean i know people love dc and marvel and those characters we have a long connection to but i think it's time to move on and give people other Ch other people chances indies manga that's why i talk about it on my channel i'm a big advocate for these um creators going um independent and pushing their own ideas and giving people quality stories and art that's not being how can i say it being restricted by a corporation because there's more freedom in independent work there's more freedom for stories. There's more freedom for characters. You're not being lectured on what you can and cannot do with a story or a character because you own it and you're working on it. And I want more of that. I do. And that's why I, I don't like when people come online and bash people for wanting to do this. And again, I'd say back indie creators. Read manga because they are... Um, from what I understand, independent as well. But this is fiendish. I think it's got potential. I am going to probably back the next book when it comes out right now, and I'll put the link down below. You can sign up for the email notification when it does become available. But again, if you like something like D&D, &D, uh, kind of like that fantasy Lord of the Rings type thing, but with a little bit more um, blood and guts... <laughs> I would recommend Fiendish. Um, it has potential. Again, she's new to this on her own, so she probably has time to kind of really flesh this out as she goes along. So yes, Fiendish, let me know. Have you backed it? Have you read it? Or do you recommend anything else? Go ahead, comment down below. Do not forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.